Hey everybody, this is Frilly and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build this really easy, infinitely expandable villager trading hall. So before I give you all the features of this bad boy, there's a couple of things you need to know. Firstly, you can't build this within 32 blocks of a valid village. That's a breeder or an iron farm or just a naturally spawning village. Because if you do, these guys will breed. Now, even if you don't feed them, even if they come into the breeder completely unfed, when you start trading with them, their very first trade will allow them to breed. So if you trade with that guy, then you trade with that guy next to it, they'll both go into love mode and if they're within a village if they're within 32 blocks of any valid doors they'll have a little baby and the little baby is going to fall down in between them now these guys don't sit on tracks they sit on a trap door so that means if another little entity a little villager gets in between them he's going to push the minecarts off kilter and then when you open the trap door to get rid of them they won't fall down so this is it's very specific once these guys are in the base like this you can't be moving them so any little baby in there is going to completely mess it up so don't build this within 32 blocks of a valid village so in the past i've been criticized by a few people for making the tutorials a little bit too long by going on and on a little bit too much about what these things can do so what I've done this time is uh, I'll put a link to the preview video that I posted a while ago in the top right hand corner now. So if you want to go off and see what this thing can do, then click on the link at the top. But just don't forget to come back when you've had a look. And that means now we can just get on and build this thing. To build the trading hall, you're going to need an area that is eight blocks deep by as many blocks long as you've got villagers plus about half a dozen blocks on each end so if you've got 16 villagers you'll need uh, eight by 16 plus six on one side and a gap of six on the other give or take it might be a, a little bit more might be a little bit less and you're also going to need to dig down at least three blocks at the front so take that into account when you're deciding on somewhere to build it and you're also going to need to build up at least 10 blocks. Now the materials for building this obviously depend on how many villagers you're going to have in your trading hall. But as a general rule of thumb, you're going to need, give or take, half a stack of planks per bay. So if you've got 16 bays, you're going to need 16 times this. If you've got seven bays, you're going to need seven times. I'm sure you get the gist of it. So each bay you're going to need about uh, between half a stack and a stack of your block of choice. You're going to need three stairs. Now, two of those are decorative. One of them has to be stairs because otherwise your chest won't open. You're going to need four bits of glass. You're going to need a couple of bits of glowstone or sea lanterns, just a bit of lighting. You're going to need one button for the front. You're going to need a bit of carpet to go on top of your counter. Now, I don't show this in the tutorial, but it serves two purposes. One, it looks nice. And two, it stops baby zombies from getting in. So if you think you might have trouble with baby zombies getting into your villages, you need to put a bit of carpet on top of your counter that stops them getting over the counter you're also going to need a sign to put over the top of the chest which indicates the trades that your villager has got that's optional you don't need it but i think that's nice you're going to need four or five powered rails you're going to need a couple of levers a couple of trap doors any trap door will do you can have any wooden trap door or even the metal trap doors they're just as good you're going to need a piece of string you're going to need a chest, you're going to need an observer, you're going to need a repeater, you're going to need a comparator, you're going to need a sticky piston, a cauldron, and you're going to need some water to put in the cauldron. So you'll need all of that for every bay you're going to have in your trading hall. In addition, you're going to want a stack of powered rails. You might need more than that. Again, it depends on how big your trading hall is going to be. You're going to need levers to power all of your powered rails and a couple of levers on either end 
to activate the pistons for the dead man switch you're going to need several stacks of your block of choice you're going to need two signs you're going to need two sticky pistons you're going to need half a stack maybe a stack of stained glass and you're going to need a couple of redstone lamps as indicators for the dead man's switch if at all possible you really need to be building the trading hall so when you're looking at it you're facing either east or west that's south down there i've just put a marker down there so i know which way south is but you really want to be looking at the trading hall when you're facing east to west and that's all because of how rails stack together when we're putting the rails down for the for the breeder for the villagers to to travel on if we're looking east to west they snap together that way rails with, will always snap together east to west which just makes them easier to work with if we were facing north to south and we were trying to put the rails down for the villagers to go on to they'd snap the wrong way and it just becomes really difficult putting the the rails down so if you can it's not impossible you're just gonna have to to mess about you'll have to put a couple of rails down then you'll have to put a couple of rails down and then you'll have to delete some rails and put a few more rails down it's just it's just not easy to do so if you can build this while you're facing uh, either west or east now in this tutorial i'm going to be building the trading hall with 16 villagers in it you can build it with as little as seven villagers in it and you can build it with as many as as you want really there, there's no limit to the amount that you can put in it but i'm going to use 16 villagers so you need to come to the right hand side and decide where you want your first villager to be standing so this is going to be the counter that you stand behind. It's got the button on and your village is going to be stood in there on that block there. So underneath the counter, you need to dig down two blocks. And then you need to dig across a trench that is 16 blocks long or as many blocks as you've got villages in your trading hall. As you say, we're going to have 16 this one. So I need to dig a trench that's 16 blocks wide. Like that. So now you've done that, just get yourself to each end again and you need to dig down another two blocks on each end. It needs to be one wider than your trading hall. And now we're going to have to put some powered rails on the bottom. But because this is going to be visible, you want to be putting your powered rails on a nice block. So uh, I'd, I'd change them out. If you've got dirt down there or stone or andesite or whatever and you want them to look nice, then just change these out for the block that you want to be able to see i'm going to be building most of this out of spruce so i'm going to change these blocks out for spruce blocks like that and now we need to stick powered rails on every one of those blocks like that now these blocks have got to be powered rails you can't scrimp on this and have a couple of powered rails and a couple of normal rails and a couple of powered rails and a couple of normal rails because the villagers when they enter that track to be disposed of if they enter onto a standard rail they're just going to sit there and not move so these all have to be powered so now we've got those down there like that we just need to get them powered so to do that easy enough just pop out a couple of blocks stick a redstone torch underneath block back on and put the rail back on it again and then come to this end do the same again So now we've got them all powered like that. Now we need to do a little bit more digging. So we want to go to the back. This is going to be the front of the trading hall. So we need to go over to the back and we need to dig a trench out that is three wide by 16 long. So it, it'll start one block in from this end and it'll finish one block in from the other end. And it needs to be three wide and two deep. So now you've got that, we're going to be putting rails at a perpendicular angle to that track there so we're going to be putting rails here but we want them all to snap that way so we can't just put one rail down because it won't snap the right way we need to be putting two down which again is one of the reasons for putting building this east to west otherwise this becomes really difficult now the rail at the back 
is just there to snap them the right way. We're going to remove those and put a block down. So we haven't got to worry about the block underneath that, but the block here is going to be visible. So if you want that to look nice, you're going to have to pop out that block and replace it with your block of choice. Like that. And now we need to stick rails on all the all of those blocks that you've just put down and all of the blocks behind it. And providing you are facing east to west, they'll snap like that. Now we need to delete or, or remove the rails that are at the back. So those rails there, we just need to pop out and get rid of. So you're left with that. And then behind those rails, we need to put a solid block. And again, this is going to be visible from the front. So make it a nice block. Stick a block down like that. Now, all of those rails there need to be powered. So get yourself behind the back with a lever and put a lever on the back of this block we've just put down and then turn them all on. If you wanted to use redstone torches underneath the rails, then you can do, just dig them out a couple of blocks, but levers are cheaper. So now you should have something that looks like that. Now, just to finish this section off and to make it look nice, you need to cover the back block with a solid block, your block of choice, and then cover the one next to it. Like that and then if you want to pop out the the, the end blocks because again these are going to be visible so pop those out replace them and you're also going to be able to to see these blocks at the front as well so if we dig down two blocks here and dig all the way across and then replace the bottom block with the block of choice And then cover the top with a bit of glass. And now you've got something that looks like that. Now it's time to put in the mechanism for the villagers to stand on. I'll try and do this in a survival friendly order. Uh, obviously I'm flying about in creative which makes this so much easier. But I'll try and do it in in an order that is going to make it easier for you to do in survival. So firstly, we need to put down the counter at the front for us to stand behind when we're trading with the villagers. So stick yourself down a temporary block just there and then run a line of blocks all the way down the front of your trading hall. Like that. Not forgetting to take out the temporary block. Now grab another temporary block and stick it all the way down the blocks you've just placed. And on top of that, we need to put down some chests. And to put chests next to each other so they don't snap like that, you need to crouch. So you put, put down a chest and crouch, put down another and then another and then another all the way down to the end. And then you can just pop out those temporary blocks there. And we've got that. Now get yourself around the back again and stick down a line of blocks on the back just here. So you've got the front, the counter at the front, you've got the back just there like that. And then drop down into where the tracks are and you need to put a trap door on that block there so it has to be on the bottom of the top block don't put it on the top of the middle block like that you need to put it on the bottom of the top block so it sits proud of the floor it has to sit proud of the floor if it doesn't, if it goes on the bottom one, if it goes down there like that, then the villagers, their heads won't be in the string uh, and it, it, it'll just break the system. So make sure that the, 
make sure the trapdoor is at the bottom of the top block. So now you've got something like that. Now I'm a big fan of lighting, certainly when I'm building with villagers, because the more lighting, the less chance you've got of, of having mobs running at them. Uh, so I'm going to put a bit of lighting on the back and I'm going to put some lighting on that block there. It doesn't have to be glowstone. It can be a sea lantern or it can be a jack-o'-lantern if you want it to be. But if you're going to put a bit of lighting in, this is where you want to be putting it. So stick yourself down some lighting blocks like that. And then on the top of that, with the redstone part at the back and the detection part at the front, you need to put down an observer. So you've got the smiley face at the front. The string is going to go on on the face of that. So you've got the smiley face at the front. You've got the red stony bit at the back. You could, if you put it the other way around, if you put it that way around, with the red stony bit at the front, it won't work. So make sure you've got the smiley face at the front, the red stony bit at the back. And do that all the way down. So now we've got something that looks like that. Now we need to get some rails on top of these observers, but we want them to be pointing so the villager falls down onto the track. So we can't just stick them there like that because it won't work. So we have to stick a temporary block behind the back of the observer. So get yourself a temporary block, just stick it on the back of your observer block. And then, providing you are facing either east or west you can run a line of rails powered rails all the way down on top of your observers and then all the way back on your temporary block and they'll all snap the right way now we can just get rid of the temporary block at the back with the rails and we're left with that now we need to pull a signal out of the back of the observer when it detects a change in state of the piece of string at the front. And to do that, we need to put a repeater coming out of the back of the observer. And we can't just place repeaters in thin air, so we need to stick a block over the back of the, the glowstone. And then if we stand on top of the observer, we can put down a repeater on standard one tick this has got to be on one tick because we need a one tick pulse going into the sticky piston we can put a repeater like that now on the face of the repeater we need a solid block so get yourself around the back you'll have to crouch to do this and put a solid block just there and then run that all the way down the front of the repeaters Like that. Now we need a sticky piston on the back of that facing upwards. So if you get on the top like this and then the crouch you can actually put a sticky piston there like that and then if you crouch and hold hold right click with your sticky piston you just put some sticky pistons all the way down the back of this block. So now you've got something that looks like that. Now we need to stick a bit of string in the system. We need to put some string over the face of these observers. So if you get, get to the front and just look up at the observer and put some string like that. You can just about see the hitbox of the string and you'll be able to hear the pistons at the back firing, which is a good thing. So now you've got all, your pist all, your, uh, all of your string on the faces of your sticky on the faces of your observer so now when your villager drops in his head is going to be in the string and it's going to activate the the piston once when he falls out of the string it's going to activate the sticky piston at the back for a second time now you want to grab your solid blocks again and you need to run a line of solid blocks all the way down there okay so run a, a line of solid blocks all the way to the end on this right next to your sticky pistons and then on top of your sticky pistons, you need to stick a cauldron. So if you jump around and you get on top of the, the blocks you've just placed, you can then put a cauldron down on top of all of your sticky pistons. And these cauldrons all have to be filled with water. 
Now be careful when you're doing this, you don't accidentally put water on top of the block by mistake. If you do, you're going to wash away your redstone, there are going to be tears and everything. So be careful when you're using water around redstone. So now you've got something that looks like that. Now grab yourself some comparators, these have to be comparators, and you need to put a comparator facing the front on top of this block here. So get round on top of your, your cauldrons and put a comparator down like this. Okay, so now we have that. Now we need to get back around the front, jump back up on top of your observer blocks and we need to put a solid block directly above the repeater and then another block on top of that so it's on the face of the comparator. So now you've got that. And then take out your trap doors again. You probably have to jump up on top of your chest this time. Now you need to put a trap door on the bottom of the top block. So if you look at your rails and place the try and place the trap door on the rails, it'll be in the right place. In fairness, you can't place it on the bottom block anyway. So either either place it on the bottom of the top block or try and place it on your rails and it'll appear in the right place. If you place it there then this is not going to work. Okay, they'll close, but the villager won't fall through there onto the rails. It has to be on the bottom of the of the block. So now we've got that. Now you need to grab some stairs and we need to put some stairs on top of these chests. We can't use solid blocks because if we did, as you all know, you're not going to be able to access the chest. So we need to put a stair like that. Okay, you need to run that all the way down. Now you need to take out your levers. We need to power these rails. So we need to take out a lever or you can use a torch if you want to. If you want to use a redstone torch you can, but I just think, well, levers are cheaper and they look nicer. So grab yourself a lever, stand on top of these trap doors and you need to put a lever on the back of all of these stairs. And then just flip them all on. And now that's powered all of your rails. Now I'm going to stick the back, the top and the front on the top part of the trading hall. So what I'm going to do is I'll do one bay uh, and then we can just copy it all the way down because once we've done one bay, they're all identical. So grab yourself some solid blocks, get on the top of the block behind the back of your trap door and you want to go up three blocks. Then take out your glowstone or your sea lantern or your pumpkin and you want to do a sea lantern or glowstone there. Then grab solid blocks again and do another two solid blocks like that. Then drop down onto your stairs underneath. You need to grab some glass and put three pieces of glass. One there, one there. Can we look at that lever? Crouch, put another one there. Brilliant. Three pieces of glass like that. And then get underneath and you need to put an upside down stair there like that. So now we want to copy that all the way down to the end. So now we've got that. And I'll just do a quick flyby, quick end view. And that's what it should look like now. Now we need to decide which end we want to be the keep villagers end and which end we want to be the dispose of villagers end. Now it doesn't really matter. If your villager breeder is over that way somewhere, then you're probably best off having your disposed villagers going down this way and dying and then your mycots going off to your villager breeder and then this end would be the keep end and if we've got the breeder over there somewhere then we could have this is a disposed end and this is the keep end. It doesn't really matter. So pick an end that you want to be the disposed villagers end, get right to the end and you need to dig down three blocks. Just give ourselves a bit of room here. So dig a hole it's three blocks deep 
and go back a good few blocks just to give ourselves a bit of room like that now this is where the water's going to go we're going to we're going to suffocate the these poor fellas into uh, into bricks and to do that we're going to be using a water chute so they'll come down the rails and then they'll fall off into some water and because you might be able to see the blocks when you've stood here you want to be using your nice block of choice so stick down a couple of blocks there like that you're going to want to dig these out in case you can see the blocks through the water and then you're going to want to put another another few blocks there like that then you can stick your water in there and then this is where your villages are going to go down so dig a, a tunnel under the water uh, sorry dig a tunnel underneath the the ground right to the end of where the water is and a little bit further and then this is where your minecart rails are going to go that take your minecart back to your back to your breeder so stick down your rails that are going to take it off there and then fill this back in over the top with solid blocks so so you, you, your villager now is going to come here in his minecart and then start to suffocate when he goes through there. Now we need to stick the stop end block in that's going to stop the villagers. If we want to keep them, we need to block this end off. So we need to stick a block just there. And that's going to be the block that the villagers bounce off of if we want to keep them. The other end's going to be open, this end's going to be locked up and vice versa. So stick a block there. And then grab yourself a sticky piston and you need to put it just there like that. It needs to be one block gap so when that's extended it covers the hole. And now we can fill in around the, the sticky piston like that. And then build a column of blocks just up there. This is where your lever is going to go stick a lever on there and then a redstone lamp on top that's optional you don't need a redstone lamp there but i just think it's nice to have it so you know when the dead man's switch is turned on now we need to run a redstone line from the back of that lever down onto the top of this piston so it's easy to do put a couple of blocks there like that grab a couple of pieces of dust dust there and dust there and now when the when the levers down the system is on the dead man switch is active when you flick the lever up the dead man switch is turned off and your villagers can be disposed of and now we just need to fill in around the side of this Like that so now you've done this side we need to do pretty much exactly the same as that at the other end and then join these two together so get yourself down to the other end and we need to dig down three blocks again at the end to give ourselves a bit of room now we don't need to put water at this end because we're not trying to kill them now so that can go off to wherever it is you want it to go off to. And then we just need to extend, extend that line. If you want this to go back up into the system, if you want to be able to move the villagers around, you just need to divert this back up into here. And we'll do that, we'll do that at the end. But for to start with, we just need to, to divert this off. Actually, you are going to be able to see that from the top so like we did at the other end just change the block out to a nice one and then you can run those off down there and now we need to stick a stop end at this end but we need it to be in the opposite direction we'll we'll sort it out with the the wiring in a second but if you crouch and put a block directly above that uh, that rail there that will block off the rail but it won't damage the rail underneath it so now when it when the uh, when the block moves 
the rail is still going to be there and the villager can still go down. And now we need to stick, pop out a few more blocks, we need to stick a sticky piston just there. And then we need to just highlight this block we need. We need to highlight that block so we know which one it is when we when we bring the the, uh, the line down. We're going to be bringing the line down the back onto the top of here. So we can do that and then just fill in around the side of the sticky piston again. Being careful not to put anything over there. If you stick a solid block, one block above those rails, your poor village is going to come down and take quite a bit of suffocation damage. And by the same token, you can't put you can't put blocks. Sorry, you can't put blocks there because you'll take suffocation damage. You can't put a solid block above there. Otherwise, the same thing will happen. And if you don't want to be able to see a big hole down the end, and in fairness, it's not it's not bad. But it's not great. So if you don't want to see that big hole down the end, once you put your stop stop block in at the end, just stick a stair on the top of it. So if you get to the back and stick a stair there, that way when it's closed, it's all closed and the uh, the villager won't take suffocation damage when he's going through a stair. So stick a stair on top of that stop block, not a solid block, and you're probably best putting another stair behind that as well, just so I don't know whether it'll take damage going down that, down the, uh, the track there with the second block. But it won't hurt to put another uh, another stair behind just in case. And then you can fill that in around it like that. And now we need to run the redstone down the back from the other end to activate this piston. So grab some dust and get down to this end. Make sure this lever is turned on. And then run a line of redstone dust all the way down the back as far as it'll go. Okay, down to there. Then stick a redstone, uh, stick a block in there, and then put a redstone torch on the top of it. So now, when that when that to leave us down, this line is on, which means the torch is off, which means this redstone line is off, and we need to run that into the back of that block there like that we can't run it around onto the top we can't do this because if we do we bud that piston underneath uh, which stops it from working so we need to drop it down onto that block down there like that and then we can cover that piston over cover that block over and now, if we go down this end, flick it a few times to, to start it working. So now when the lever's down at this end, the dead man switch is active. The, bay, the villager can't go through that end to be disposed of. But this end is now open. So he can go off to the farms or be recycled. And when we flick the lever again, this end opens. So the villager can now be disposed of. And this end is all blocked up. So if he comes down now, he'll bounce off the bounce off that end and go down and be and be disposed of. But now you should have something that looks like that. Now we need to get the water in at the top, and we need to be really careful when we do this. Uh, and I can't stress this too much uh, because we really don't want water to be pouring off the end and getting into the redstone, or it will break it. So. Be really careful and check and double check before you start putting down buckets of water. So for this length of trading hall, you're going to need a couple of buckets of water. You'll need one at this end, then you'll need a sign, and then you'll need another bucket flowing down to the end. What we want is for the water to flow the full eight blocks at the end. So we don't have to put a stop on the end of the water before it reaches the rails that are going to take the villagers back round again. So in order to do that, we need to put a sign that's eight blocks, sorry, that's nine blocks back from the end. So we need to count nine blocks, but let's get inside the, the breeder. Sorry, inside the trading hall. The water's going to run down here 
on top of these doors. It's actually going to run down. It's going to run down at that level. OK, see, so it's going to run down on top of that open trap door. So we need to put put a block down at the end. That's going to be the end. That's going to be the uh, the block where the rail goes on to at that end. So we need to count eight blocks back towards the center of the farm. OK, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's where our water is going to go. Our water's going to go on that block. So we need to put a sign just there. And now we've got eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Before the, the water will stop. And as I say, just double check it. If you're really just double check it. I can't stress it enough because if if you put that a couple of blocks too far this way, the water is going to flow off the end and you'll have a bit of a mess. But count eight blocks, put down your sign and then put your water source block. Don't put it on the trap door. OK, Let's, do not try to place water onto a trap door. Because in 1.13, you will waterlog that trap door. The water will flow underneath and wash away all of your rails. OK, so do not put it on that block. Don't put it on the same block as the trap door. I'm going to labor this point once more. Don't put your water on that trap door or on that bottom block or it'll waterlog the trap door and you'll wash away your rails. Put it on that block. And that way it'll flow right to the end. And then we're going to put some rails just there. And then you need to get to the other end. And you need to stick down a couple of blocks. Like that. And then a little U shape. And you want to be putting your next block of water onto here again don't put it on the trap door don't just don't do it there'll be tears and everything stick it on this block now that water will flow to the the sign and then that water will flow all the way down to the end so now you should have something that looks like that Now, when your villagers come into this, they're going to be coming on a rail. So they'll come down the back on a rail, they'll come over here and then they'll shoot out into the water. And as a rule, when they shoot out into the water, they'll go over two or three blocks and you don't want them to miss the first bay. So in order to stop them from doing that, you need to stick a block of glass just there. So they'll come down and they'll hit the glass and they'll fall down straight down and then go underneath the glass, not taking any suffocation damage because they won't in glass. And that way they just won't shoot out over the top. However, if you look inside there now, you can see that block. Can you see it at the top? You can see that there's a block of glass in there. Now that bugs me. It might not bother you. And if you don't have a load of glass, then you don't have to do this, but it bugs me. So what I suggest you do is put that glass block all the way down to the end, all the way down to here. So just jump in this side, get down here and then just run that glass all the way down to the end. Like that. And now when you look in, it doesn't look like there's a, a solid block of glass just stuck in the middle. It's all uniform all the way down. Now we need to stop putting in the rails that go around the back that carry the villagers around the back and back into the, the front of the farm again. But first, grab your solid block, your block of choice, and just put a uh, an end up there like that. And then run another one All the way up to the top like that so that, that sort of blocks off the end then you can do the same on that up to there so now you can't see anything in through that side apart from where the villagers are going to go now grab yourself a powered rail and you need to stick a powered rail just there 
the, the uh, villagers are going to land on when they reach the end of the water chute. And you need to put a solid block next to it and put a lever on the back of that block to power it like that. And now we need to run uh, a, a line of blocks all the way around the back. So if you just grab some blocks, put a few like that to start with, and then we want it to drop down to try and stop them from banging together and getting stuck. We need to drop down that block. But in order, and we need to put rails on that line, on that block there going that way. But to stop them from snapping together, if we put another one there, it's going to snap together. To stop it from doing that, just whip out that block and put a temporary rail in there. And then you can take that out again and put that block back. Now we need to run this backwards a few blocks. So there, 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 and then up like that. And then we can put powered rails on there and then a normal rail on there. And then we need to run it down there, but we don't want to bud these, these uh, pistons here. So we need to come down one and then up like that. Okay, and then run this all the way down to the end like that. Then grab your powered rails again. You need to put a powered rail there, powered rail there. Then we need to join all of these together. And then grab yourself a lever, stick a lever underneath to power those ones. And then we can stick a lever here. I don't think a lever will power all of them. Actually, I know it won't. So stick one there, power those. One there, power those. One there for those. And one there for those. So now your, your villagers are going to go down here. They're going to fall off the end onto the rail. And hopefully, because we've got a bit of an incline, they won't get stuck. I can't guarantee that they won't get stuck because I've not been able to do it yet. Where when this gets completely full, they won't get stuck. I'm, I'm pretty sure they will. But if it does, then you'll just have to get up here and give them a little push. But now you should have something that looks like this. Now, before we go uh, any further, what we need to do is just do a little bit of decorating around the outside of it, along the edges. So grab yourself your solid blocks again. You need to fill all of this in. And then do the same on the other side. And now you'll need to fill in the backs so you can't see through. But you need to be careful when we're doing this. Uh, we don't want to block the villagers or cause them to take any kind of damage. Actually, while we're down here, we'll do the bottom bit as well. So just stick some blocks in there. And that way, now you can't see through down the bottom. You can't see through down the bottom there. Can't see through down the bottom there. Can't see down there. Can't see down through the bottom there so up here now stick in a few blocks there stick in those blocks like that above here we want to put a slab so grab yourself a slab and stick stick a couple of slabs there like that and that way when you look through here it looks like a solid a solid wall solid roof sorry but your little villagers aren't going to take damage when they come because they won't take damage through a slab so you can do that and then fill in fill in that little bit like that and that way it's now that side is blocked up so you can't see through oh, you can if you get all the way over here Now you can't see through. OK, so that's that side done. And we want to, want to do something similar on this side. So we'll just block this end off. We need that end blocking off anyway, because we don't want the villagers to shoot off the end and go flying down there. So we'll do that. Those there, put a couple of blocks there like that. 
don't put blocks one high over these rails again otherwise they'll take suffocation damage and after a few trips round they'll die so you need to make sure that the the gap that they're going on to is too high and then we can put that there like that and cover that over so now we've got something that looks like that now we're nearly finished we've nearly finished everybody if you've got this far congratulations well done uh, only a few more minutes to go now we need to stick in the input for where the villagers come into and the villagers are going to come in and fall in through that block there so pop out the end block of glowstone and you should be able to look straight down right on the last piece of water the last uh, last bit of water there and we want our villagers to fall down onto that block the uh, idea being if there's a villager already in there they'll fall down and they'll land on the villager uh, and they won't be able to enter the system until there's a gap so what we want to do is we need to stick a block of glass there directly above that bit of uh, sorry that rail because when the minecart falls onto the top of another minecart we don't want it being pushed that way and then your village is going to get suffocated in this solid block so we want him to stay here until there's a gap in the water and as soon as there's a little gap he'll then fall in and he'll then be able to go that way which is why we need a block of glass there so now we've done that we need to put down some powered rails these are the power rails that are going to take your your villager in and we need to surround the block the hole with a couple of blocks just to stop the uh, just sort of villagers falling off the tracks and then obviously they'll come straight along here fall down everybody's happy and we need to if we put that all the way down we can empower those just here grab yourself a lever get those powered like that now we need to hook that up with the rail down the bottom in case you want to swap villagers around so we somehow need to 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 link that up with that so all we need to do is pop out a few blocks find out where it comes out to run that down a little bit stick in a lever to give us a bit of power and then stair step it up like that and we need to power this as well let's power that just down there like that and then we'll do some kind of stair upwards let's just do a stair step upwards if we come out like that and then like that we can then oh we can use powered rails can't we for it's good grief we can then run that up here that up here and that can run straight into there then we just need to power these with a with a uh, lever this doesn't I mean this this is all optional you don't if you've got a better way of doing this or you want to you you want the, the the rails to go somewhere else then by all means do that if you want the villagers to join straight onto this rail then you can do that it, or if you want the villagers to come and join from over here then you can do that that's entirely up to you but I have found that having the villagers enter through this hole into the water is the best way of not getting them to stop on the tracks but as I say that's entirely up to you now what I'm going to do now it's this is optional as well but if I've got a farmer in here that I want to go off to a farm or I've got a really good zombie spawner and I've got a, a good cleric in here that gives me a really good rotten flesh trade I might want to move him somewhere else so I don't want him to come down here and then go back in the system I'm going to want him to go somewhere else or I'm going to want the farmer to go somewhere else so I'm going to stick a lever there a bit of redstone there and there what I'm going to do is stick a how can we do this if we stick a rail here like this that can be the the output that'll take you off to the farms 
And then if we hook this up, like that, when the levers are up, they go off to the farm. When the levers are down, they'll go straight round and they'll go back up into the, into the system. So do that, stick a torch above it. So when the light's on, they're going to get recycled into the system. When the light's off, they're going to go off into a farm. And then we just need to power that like that. Now the last bit of rail work is going to be the uh, is going to be the uh, the rail that brings the villagers into the system from the from the breeder. Now, as I say, you can bring them in anywhere you like. I mean, if you want to bring them in, if you want to bring them in over here, if your villager breeder is up there and you want to bring them in over here, that's brilliant. You can do that. As I said, you can bring them in from the other end. I'm going to bring them in down here. So all of my brand new villagers from my villager breeder will come in here and then go up the ladder, up, sorry, up the steps and then fall into the system there. So now the, all that's left to do is to completely skin the outside of it and then test it. So let's just cover these over. Cover that over to there. Now you don't have to do that, but I have done. So now all we have to do is get some villagers in there. Now I've got myself a couple of command blocks, so hopefully this will spawn a, a villager over there and then put a my cart underneath him and hopefully put him into the system. Brilliant. So he's come in. Because he's come straight down, he's gone straight into the M bay. Got another one. He comes up, drops down there. Brilliant. Goes around, drops into the system. Falls through into the first bay. Fantastic. So let's get a couple of these going. See if we can get a couple up there together. See what happens then. I know they went through okay, didn't they? Yep, so these are banging off each other, which I thought might happen, but they seem to be clearing, clearing through. Okay, yeah, no, that's, that's okay so far. That's not okay. But that is okay, but that's not okay. So you see, it's, uh, if you can come up with a better way of doing it around the back, then I'd love to hear it. So I'll get a few more into the system. Brilliant, that seems to be working perfectly. They've all cleared themselves through at the back. I didn't have to go up there at all. So they have they have cleared themselves, which is fantastic. And we have got a few at the top. Any more than this, it's going to start getting a bit full. The last thing we need to do now, now we're happy that everything's in place, we can stick in the buttons. Any button you like. Uh, it can be stone, it can be wood. Uh, any wooden button, any coloured button. It's entirely up to you. And then if you want to stick signs on here, so you know which one is which. So the, 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 the death chute is open. So up is, oh, up is open and down is closed, like that. And then over at this end, up is off to the farms and down is recycle. And that's it. If you've made it this far, fantastic. Really well done. You've just made yourself a really really good villager trading hall so thank you for watching this tutorial everybody i really do hope you've appreciated it if you have please don't forget to leave it a like and if you've really loved it don't forget to subscribe for future tutorials this is frilly off and i'm out of here